Hadoop cluster, an extraordinary computational unit designed specifically to store, optimize, and analyze petabytes of data with astonishing agility. I'm Ravi Kiran, and I welcome you all to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. In today's session, we shall learn about Hadoop cluster. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, we shall begin with what is a Hadoop cluster. Here, I'll explain you what actually a computer cluster is, and soon after that, I'll take you to Hadoop clusters. Second, we shall discuss a few major advantages of Hadoop cluster. Followed by that, we shall learn a few facts about Hadoop cluster, and later on, we shall get into the core of Hadoop cluster, which is none other than its architecture. Once we finish off with the theory part, I shall get you involved into the practical session where we'll be setting up a Hadoop cluster. And finally, we shall deal with the Hadoop cluster management system, the Ambari. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let us begin with our first topic. What is a Hadoop cluster? Before getting started into the Hadoop cluster, let us understand what actually a basic computer cluster is. A cluster basically means that it is a collection. A computer cluster is also a collection of interconnected computers which are capable enough to communicate with each other and work on a given task as a single unit. Similarly, Hadoop cluster is also a collection of commodity hardware which can be computers and servers interconnected with each other and work together as a single unit. Hadoop cluster has a master and numerous number of slaves. Master assigns the task and guides the slaves. Now that we know what a Hadoop cluster is, let us now understand its advantages over the other similar data processing units. Some of the major advantages of Hadoop cluster are Hadoop cluster is scalable, cost effective, flexible, fast and resilient to failure. Let us now discuss each one of them in detail. First, Hadoop cluster is scalable. Hadoop is a beautiful storage platform with unlimited scalability. Compared to RDBMS, Hadoop storage network can be expanded by just adding additional commodity hardware. While RDBMS can't scale and process huge amounts of data, Hadoop on the other hand can run business applications over thousands of computers altogether processing petabytes of data. Second one, the Hadoop cluster is cost effective. Traditional data storage units had many limitations and the major limitation was related to the storage. Hadoop clusters overcome it drastically by its distributed storage topology. Hadoop clusters use commodity hardware and the lack of storage can be handled by just adding additional storage units to the system and the clusters functions as good as new. The third one is Hadoop clusters are flexible. Flexibility is the major advantage of Hadoop cluster. The Hadoop clusters can process any type of data irrelevant whether it is structured, semi-structured, or completely unstructured. This enables Hadoop to process multiple types of data directly from social media. The fourth advantage is Hadoop clusters are fast. Hadoop clusters can process petabytes of data within a fraction of a second. This is possible because of the efficient data mapping capabilities of Hadoop. The fourth feature is Hadoop clusters are fast. Hadoop clusters can process petabytes of data within a fraction of a second. This is possible because of the efficient data mapping capabilities of Hadoop. The secret behind high speed performance is that the data processing tools are always kept available on the service. That is, the data processing tool is available on the same unit where the data needed is stored. The fifth advantage is the data clusters are resilient to failure. The data loss in a Hadoop cluster is a myth. It is practically impossible to lose any data in a Hadoop cluster as it follows the data replication which acts as a backup storage unit in a case of a node failure. So with this, let us move on to our next topic which is related to Facebook's Hadoop cluster. Since 2004 from its launch, Facebook is one of the biggest users of Hadoop cluster. It is called as the beefiest Hadoop cluster. It approximately uses 4000 machines and is capable to process millions of gigabytes together. Facebook has 2.38 billion number of active users. To manage such a huge network, Facebook uses multiple storage frameworks and millions of developers writing MapReduce programs in multiple programming languages. It also uses SQL, which drastically improves the process of search, log processing, recommendation system, starting from data warehousing to the video and image analysis. Facebook is growing day to day by encouraging all possible updates to its cluster. Scuba. With a huge amount of unstructured data coming across each and every day, Facebook slowly realized that it needs a platform to speed up the entire analysis part. This is when the scuba was developed. Hadoop developers can dive into massive data sets and carry on ad hoc analysis in real time. The second update was Cassandra. 
the traditional data storage units started lagging behind when Facebook search team discovered an inbox search problem. The developers were facing issues in storing the reverse indices of messages sent and received by the users. The challenge was to develop a new storage solution that could solve the inbox search problem and similar problems in the future. The objective was to develop a distributed storage system dedicated to manage a large amount of structured data across multiple commodity servers without even failing for once. This is when the Cassandra was developed. The next update is Hive. After Yahoo implemented Hadoop for its search engine, Facebook thought about empowering the data scientists so that they could store larger amount of data in the Oracle Data Warehouse. Hence, Hive came into existence. This tool improved the query capability of Hadoop by using a subset of SQL and soon gained popularity in the world of unstructured data. Today, almost thousands of jobs are run using this system to process a range of applications quickly. Today, Facebook is one of the biggest corporations on Earth, thanks to its active 2.5 billion users. Let us have an overview on the Facebook's Hadoop cluster, then let us move on to the architecture of Hadoop cluster. So this is the overview of Facebook's Hadoop cluster, which consists of web servers, ad hoc Hive Hadoop cluster, production Hive Hadoop cluster, and many more. Now that we have gone through a few facts on Facebook's Hadoop cluster, let us move on to the Hadoop architecture, which has the following components. The architecture of Hadoop consists of the following components, HDFS and YAN. Let us now begin with HDFS. HDFS consists of the following components, the name node, secondary name node, and data node. Let us discuss about each one of them in detail. Name node. Name node is responsible for running master daemons. Name node is designed to store the metadata, which means the information about the actual data, or in short, the schema of the data. Name node is the first one to encounter the client's request for data. It then transfers the request to the data nodes, which store the actual data. The name node is responsible for managing the health of all the data nodes. It receives a heartbeat from all the data nodes at a particular interval of time, and it also receives a status update of the task assigned. If any of the data node fails to respond with a heartbeat, then the name node considers the data node to be dead, and it reassigns the task to the next data node. The next one is data node. Data nodes are called as the slaves of name node, and they're responsible to store the actual data, and also to update the task status and health status to the name node in the form of a heartbeat. Now, the last one is the secondary name node. The secondary name node, as it speaks, is not actually a backup of name node, but it actually acts as a buffer, which saves the latest updates to the FS image, which are obtained in the intermediate process, and finally updates them to the final FS image. Now, let us discuss about YAN. YAN, yet another resource negotiator. YAN consists of the following elements, node manager, app master, and container. Let us discuss each one of them in detail. Node Manager. Node Manager is a Java utility that runs as a separate process from web logic server. It allows you to perform common operations for a managed server, regardless of its location with respect to the administration server. The second one is App Master. App Master is responsible for negotiating the resources between Resource Manager and Node Manager. And the last one is the Container. The container is actually a collection of reserved amount of resources allocated from the resource manager to work with the task assigned by the node manager. Now, with this, we shall have a look on the overview of the Hadoop cluster architecture, and followed by that, we shall look into the rack awareness algorithm. So this is the architecture of Hadoop cluster, which consists of racks. Each and every rack consists of a set of computers, and one of the rack consists master. And these racks use core switches to communicate between each other. Now, let us move on to the Rack Awareness Algorithm. The Rack Awareness Algorithm is all about data storage. It says that the first replica of the actual data must be located in the local rack, and the rest of the replicas can be stored on a different remote rack. Let us look onto an example to understand this in a better way. Here, I'm having a data block on the data node 1, and the data node 1 is available on the rack 1, which happens to be our local rack. Now, according to the Rack Awareness Algorithm, the replica of the data block in data node 1 can be stored in the remote racks, which might be rack 2 or rack 3. As you can see, the replicas have been stored in a remote rack, which is the rack number 2. Now, let us deal with a different block. As you can see, we have a new block in rack number 2, data node 7. This is the local rack for the data block stored in data node 7. 
Now let us see where the replicas of data node 7 are stored. The replicas of data node 7 are stored into the remote rack which is rack number 3 and the data block is stored in data node 9 and data node 12. As you can see now we have a new data block stored in the data node 11 and rack 3 is a local rack for the data block stored in data node 11. Now let us see where the replicas of data node 11 are stored. As you can see the replica blocks of data node 11 are stored in the remote rack which is rack number 1 and the data blocks are stored in data node 2 and data node 4. With this we have finished our theory part. Now let us get into the practical part where we'll learn to set up a Hadoop cluster with one master and two slaves. So let us begin with our practical session. Here we must create three host systems out of which one is the master and the other two are the slaves. So I'll be choosing the Linux operating system for this and I'll be using CentOS 7. I'll be starting with creating a new virtual machine. Here I'll be selecting my ISO image. This happens to be my ISO image which has the Hadoop pre-installed. So let the process finish. And using the similar process, you must create two new host systems and you must name them as Hadoop Slave 1 and Slave 2 as I have done here. As you can see, I have my Hadoop Master here and Hadoop Slave 1 and Hadoop Slave 2. Let me start each one of them. Now I have started my Hadoop Master, Hadoop Slave 1 and Hadoop Slave 2. Now all the components of Hadoop Cluster which are the Hadoop Master, Hadoop Slave 1 and Hadoop Slave 2 all are started. Assuming that you know how to install Hadoop, I have chosen a CentOS operating system which has the Hadoop pre-installed. Now, let us start our local host. Our local host is started. Now let us see the HDFS web user interface. This is how our HDFS web user interface looks like. And you can see our name node is in progress. And similarly, let us try to start the HDFS web user interface in our Hadoop Slave 1 and Slave 2. As you can see, the HDFS web user has been successfully started on Hadoop Master, Hadoop Slave 1 and Hadoop Slave 2. Now, let us begin with setting up our Hadoop cluster with Hadoop master and Hadoop slave 1 and slave 2. Before getting started, our first job will be getting to know the IP address of our Hadoop master. To know the IP address of the Hadoop master, we can type in the command fconfig. This command will give us the IP address of our Hadoop master. Here, my IP address is 192.168.233.130. Similarly, similarly, let us find out the IP address of our Hadoop Slave 1 and Slave 2. Now I'm in the Slave 1. Here I'll type in my command fconfig, which must show me my IP address of Slave 1. So here, the IP address of the Slave 1 is 192.168.233.138. Similarly, let us find out the IP address of Slave 2. As you can see, the IP address of slave 2 is 192.168.233.129. Now, our next job is to edit the host and set the IP addresses of the master and slaves. Now, let us open a new terminal. You can edit the host by the command vi etc slash hosts. Here, I have already edited the host as you can see. I have given 192.168.207.134 as my Hadoop master and 192.168.233.128 as my slave 1 and finally 192.168.233.129 as my slave 2. This step must be followed on all the three machines which is the Hadoop master, Hadoop slave 1 and Hadoop slave 2. Once you define the IP addresses, you can simply press escape and colon WQ to exit the terminal and save the changes you made in the terminal. As you can see, I have made the same changes in Hadoop Slave 1. 
and you can also see the same changes in Hadoop Slave 2. Remember, you have to follow all these changes in all the three machines, which includes Hadoop Master and Hadoop Slaves. Now we know that we have defined the IP addresses of all the three machines to all the three machines. Now let us see if they work or not. Let me open a new terminal and try to ping the Hadoop Slave 1. The name of my Hadoop Slave 1 is Slave 1. So let me write ping to Slave 1. As you can see, the ping is successful and the data has been sent to the Slave 1. Now let me open a new terminal and try to ping to my next slave using the command ping. As you can see, my second slave name is slave2. So I'll be writing slave2 and I'll start the ping. As you can see, the ping is successful. Now similarly, let us try this on our slaves2. Let me open a new terminal on slave1 and let me type in the command to ping the master. As you can see, the name of my master is master. So let us try to ping to the master. The ping is successful and the data has been sent. Similarly, let us try on our slave2 if slave2 can successfully send ping to the master or not. Let us open a new terminal and write in ping to the master. As you can see, the data has been successfully sent to the master here. So with this, we have successfully established a Hadoop cluster consisting of Hadoop master and Hadoop slaves. As you can see, the pings are successful. The master is communicating with both slave 1 and slave 2. And similarly, the slave 1 is communicating with master and slave 2 is also communicating with master. Now with this, we have finished our demo session. Now let us learn about managing a Hadoop cluster. Hadoop is both a command line interface as well as an API. It does not require any tool in specific for managing and monitoring utilities. Yet, there are some options available such as Ambari and Ortonworks. The most popular one is the Ambari. Let us see how does a typical Ambari user interface looks like. So this is how a typical Ambari user interface looks like. We can see the HDFS disk usage percentage, data nodes alive, memory usage graph, network usage graph, and CPU loads, cluster load, name node heap, and many more. So with this, we have come to an end of this session based on Hadoop cluster. If you have any doubts related to the topic, then please feel free to write them in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning.